Rice is a widely known staple food for many countries around the world, and most specifically in Asia and Africa. It is the third highest commodity in worldwide production after sugarcane and maize. And going beyond how delicious this complex carb is that aids in malnutrition, there are cultural significance to rice that range from throwing rice at weddings to wish newly wedded people health and prosperity, to absorbing the evil eye and protecting the home, or using rice as part of different ceremonies. We see rice isn't just consumed. This humble grain has become part of Asian cultures in ways that continues to amaze us. And as we examine the significance of rice, we also uncover the jokes that dive into how important rice has become to many of our communities. That's the key to an Asian household, rice. That shit is always cooking. There's always a pot of rice, cook it. The rice cooker's always on get locked in an Asian person's house and all the lights are off. You can find the kitchen. Just look for that little square red light. From Joe Coy, Russell Peters, and countless YouTube channels and skit shows that revolve around rice jokes. Drain it. Drain! What she doing? What she doing? Drain the Oh my god! You killing me, woman! Hiya! Drain the She... The rice. She draining rice with coal and the high. We can see that rice has clearly made its impact on our lives. Often, these jokes are targeted towards the Asian diaspora and the stereotypes related to a particular community. And these jokes show something deeper. When many of these jokes are about the love of rice, how to make rice, how rice equals to love, as an Asian parent never says I love you, but rather asks if you want some food. But what we can tell from the jokes and stereotypes that stem from rice is that everyone has an option and opinion about rice and most overall, how rice should be cooked. Chatting with Mansi Mandani, we dive into rice and more importantly, biryani, where the rice can make or break an entire dish. Rice has been this huge staple in our lives um, within the Apita community. I think rice is an integral part of uh, the South Asian cuisine in general, uh, but an even more integral part of um, the northern part of the Indian subcontinent. My favorite dish overall, if I had to name one food that is my all-time favorite food, uh, is is a biryani, uh, which is rice and meat and all different kinds of different spices and herbs that are used together to create a single dish after layering all of these things that I just talked about in more than eight layers. And we just leave it to cook for a long time in the oven um, for about an hour or so. Rice obviously is a, is a very important part of a biryani and um, good rice and good quality rice and a specific kind of rice is um, is unique to this recipe because we can only use uh, the long grain basmati rice. So when it's actually cooked out, it's open and airy, mm -hmm. uh, different from other uh, kinds of rice that we use in our country or in the, in the subcontinent. So can you share a little bit about how you kind of prepare the rice in your recipe and then a little bit about biryani, I guess? Sure. Um, so in my recipe, I parboil the rice, uh, which in simple terms means um, just using the regular long grain basmati rice, uh, soaking it in water for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, so we can actually help the rice loosen out. I don't measure the amount of water because the whole point of parboiling rice or parboiling long grain basmati rice is that um, you add at least three times the amount of water mm -hmm. or if you know if you're if you're using like a really deep bottom pan you make sure that water is up to a level that you cannot see your rice because uh you want the rice to completely dance and swim and float in the water for uh, the cooking time mm -hmm. uh, and you don't want to cook uh water into the rice you're actually cooking rice with water Traditionally, rice in India or in Pakistan that we eat with curries and, and dals and all those kind of things, water is cooked into the rice. So, right. if you so the take, water would disappear. 
correct right. water will disappear in your head if you're thinking of it if you have a handful of rice you're just putting water into it and you're puffing up the rice so it cooks right but with right. biryani rice you take a ton of water and put like a cup or two of rice in it and you just let the rice cook in it freely and like just let it dance inside the water until it's fully done mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um actually not fully done three fourths done you cook it only up to 75% doneness mm-hmm. because in biryani um when we layer it at the end of it and put it in the oven for slow cooking uh the rest of the cooking of the rice happens inside the oven with all the spices and all the flavors and all the curries and all the mm-hmm. um herbs so that's why it's important to not cook it fully because you want the last part of your rice is cooking to be done along with all the 25 spices that are around it in that oven and then also that means that because the water isn't soaking into the rice you're actually draining the rice yep uh before it's fully done right and i think that was uh one of the the things that's very different about this dish right you in other dishes you would let the water soak in so you don't have any water to kind of get rid of uh yeah. whereas biryani and especially this, your recipe means that you actually drain the rice and yeah. then the rice itself almost gets a um like fluffiness because if you overcook the rice mhm you're not going to get what you want at the end of it because you are going to cook it in the oven for 60 minutes at the end so if you overcook it in the pot you're going to have mushy rice at the end of your biryani because it's going to be cooked again in right. the oven right right so as soon as it's 75% done i turn off the flame and uh, i strain it out in a colander um which is the only way to do it because you want to remove the water uh from the rice as soon as you can because even a little bit of water even that one minute where rice sits in that in that pot before i strain it out the rice is cooking right. so you really want to be very quick with this uh in my recipe that i've typed out i actually i've actually put it that if there is one moment i do not want you to not focus if <laughs> you want to it's when you really really want to be sure that your rice is 75% done you want to get it out you could take it out in a 65% and you will be fine but if you took right. it out 85% i can guarantee you that your biryani will not be airy and fluffy at the end of it right and that's why rice in a biryani is so is such a big deal because you just cannot mess up that one thing do you know of any other recipes like this that requires the rice to be boiled without the water completely soaking in a draining as part of the process and making sure that it's not handled as much um it's so actually not in the i mean i thought that a lot of other asian cuisines might be doing this yeah. but traditionally not the only place that i've actually seen people cook rice separately and then drain it um you know like drain drain the water out of the colander is um some parts of one of india's state which is called west bengal mm-hmm. uh where there's an indo chinese cuisine that was originated in the bengal region about 20 years before independence so early 1920s um where fried rice or indo chinese fried rice is always made by straining water mm. through a blender and i and it is unique to their cuisine um i think their cuisine is unique on its own because it's not it's an it's as you you know as as you heard it's indo chinese so it's the mm. indian adaptation of chinese food um of which chili chicken and chili paneer and you know vegetarian right. durian and um you know all those kind of things are an integral part of which is not a part of the chinese cuisine or the sichuan cuisine or the mandarin cuisine Yeah. Um, which is also not really popular in the, in the US unless yeah. you go to places like little india where you see that fusion very yeah. popular yeah indo chinese uh i think is an integral part of indian food indian street food there's a ton of indian chinese 
um, carts and food trucks spread out throughout India, uh, south, north, east, west, but it originally started in Bengal. Mm. And that's why uh, Calcutta, which is uh, the capital of West Bengal state in India, has um, probably the widest variety of Indian Chinese cuisine. Mm-hmm. And their fried rice um, is made like that. They cook the rice with a ton of water and they don't let the water boil completely and they strain it out through a colander because they need their rice to be airy and fluffy. And uh, uh, I don't know, I think Sharon, if, if, if you've noticed, but one of the Bengali food channels, Bong Eats, mm. they, have a, they have an authentic uh, Calcutta uh, fried rice recipe, which is an Indian Chinese fried rice recipe and they do exactly that. Awesome. I will link that in our... Nice down below. (laughs) Um, And so, you know, I I mean, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. I mean, I when and instantly when we were like, thinking about, oh, how could we, you know, have a conversation about rice, because there's so many different opinions about how it should be prepared, how it can be made, how it should be eaten. Um, There's so many jokes, comedians always, you know, have some joke um, about rice somewhere. and I thought of you because I know that this recipe is very near and dear to your heart, this biryani recipe, but you have tips and tricks that you're very specific about. So I thought of you. Um, but I don't know if you've seen the Uncle Roger viral video um, and his reaction to the BBC food um, chef making fried rice where um, she does, you know, boil the rice without, you know, letting all the water soak in and draining it. And he's, you know, going through a range of emotions. Um, have you seen the video and what's your reaction to it? <laughs> um, I have seen it. Um, to be honest with you, I think my first reaction was, I don't know what the fuss is about. And it's, I don't understand why there's so much fuss around it. But then, uh, as with everything in life, I think I try to think a little more about why he's responding in a, in a certain way. Um, my response to that, to that response is that um, I think it's completely okay for everybody and anybody in this world to cook rice the way they want to because mm-hmm. nobody's doing it to let anyone else down. They're just doing it because of a reason and that reason right. can be anything. It can be convenience, it can be following a rule, it can be following a tradition, it can be um, just feeling like it or whatever it is. So I think it's completely okay to cook rice a certain way. And I, I was actually taken aback by the, by the response for that specific colander use, because um, it is very important to do that in a fried rice. And maybe she's trying to make a similar kind of fried rice. Um, because you do want your rice to be airy and fluffy. And I, right. I don't fully understand why um, it is such a big deal to strain it through a colander if you're actually getting what you want to do uh, and you get your final result. I'm not quite aware of why it's such a big deal. So my response is, in, I think in one sentence, it's, it's fine. I mean, why, why is it, it's, it's okay if somebody wants to strain <laughs> A rice out of uh, colander and um, have fluffy rice. Uh, I'm I'm very on a personal basis. I'm I'm not I'm not going to agree with him because I cannot make a biryani without doing that. Right. Uh, uh, and I think my biryani would be a failure if I if I made it right? if right. I made rice the way I make it for my other Indian foods or even even the rice that I jasmine rice that I cook for Thai food or Burmese food. In the comments, people were like, "Yeah." that is wrong. (laughs) And, you know, um, I never thought about like making rice this way. That's weird. Right. And it's like thinking about it, there's so many cultures, you know, and so many communities within the Apita, um, you know, makeup. I actually have one story of uh, my mother sharing this with me Uh, when she got married to my dad and um, met her mother-in-law. So, Biryani originally uh, started in Afghanistan and then slowly traveled to Pakistan and then came to India with the Mughals. Uh, So my parents um, were born and raised for about 10, 15 years in current day Pakistan soil. 
Uh, so they actually spent a good amount of their childhood around a community uh, or actually in a community where biryani was like a like french fries and ketchup like mm. every, all the time it's not a big deal traditionally colanders were not available so people would actually just you know once the rice is done yeah with their bare hands they would actually let all they would just tilt the pot and let all the water fall away and then the last part where you cannot let it free fall and you need yeah. to prevent it, they would actually put their hand and collect the rice grains and my mo- and when my mom told me that i was like you're joking right and she was like no people did it and you know it was just a regular thank you so much for your time for all the knowledge and history that um you know is very new to me because i didn't grow up with biryani i grew up with different rice dishes and different ways of preparing rice of course i am very happy to share it uh food is an important part of my life but i think uh, i i think the last thing that i want to say is uh my favorite thing about food is that um we are fortunate to be living in a world where we have such a vast variety of cultures mm-hmm. uh that we get to taste all different kinds of foods and the fact that a single grain or a single um uh you know vegetable can be cooked in uh a variety of different ways is the beauty of food and i think that's my favorite part about just food in general that thank you you're welcome it was so nice thank you thank yeah. you for having me yay and my mom and her sisters and my grandmothers uh both paternal and maternal have been making this for generations and I have sort of picked out on all the different kinds of tips and tricks that different people use in my house and created my own recipe uh which I think is my best uh recipe so far and I and I would love to share it with everybody because I think it is worth the time